Praise God. I welcome you to this uh, season of restoration of light to the body of Christ. Restoration of the truth to the body of Christ. Uh, of course, it is a restoration of truth because we know that the truth was lost in the dark age. Uh, when Jesus came and established the gospel of the kingdom, uh, he predicted that a time will come uh, that first teaching, first Christ will arise, first doctrines and things like that. And after a while, the church entered a period of a dark age. And as a result of that, the true and the pure gospel of Christ was completely lost. And in Jesus Olivet discourse, he made a very frantic statement. He said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Then the end will come. Now that statement indicates that the original truths will return to the church. Now original gospel that Jesus Christ preached and which uh, you know his disciple thought will be restored to the church. So this is a moment and the season of restoration. God is going to restore to the church revelation, truths that the church has not known, though it has been there in the law and the prophet, but it was sealed. That's why when Jesus came, you see, one of the things we must know that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of the king to search it out. So God concealed the deep things of himself, the deep things of revelation, and put it there for the king to search out. And when the king search it out, it become an honor. So he put it, some of these things are his riddles. When you interpret it, it brings you to a place of honor. For it is the glory of God to conceal a thing and uh, the honor of the king to search it out. One of the reasons why men have not come to the place of fullness of life and immortality and the priesthood of the ages to come is because they have not been able to interpret and come to the understanding of the riddles and the realities of God. When, you know, it's, it's actually a tradition that when someone interprets a, a riddle, or a dream to be elevated to the place of honor. Uh, we saw that in scripture. When Joseph interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, it brought him to the place of honor, to the place of government, to the place of reigning. We also saw that in the uh, case of Daniel, when Daniel interpreted the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, it brought him to the throne. It brought him to the place of reigning also. We also saw when Samson put forth a Riddle. Now, actually, what happened in the case of Samson is actually the prophetic testimony to what God is doing in our time and in our season. So, uh, Samson propounded a, a riddle and told the uh, Philistine that I give you a seven days to to provide an answer to my riddle, and if you can provide an answer to the riddle, I will give you, you know, thirty sheet of garment and a change of garment. In other words, if you can bring forth an answer to this, there's a reward attached to it. And he gave them seven days. And at towards the end of the seven days, the Philistine came to uh, Samson's wife and pressed upon her that you must give us an answer to the riddles. And she pressed Samson and Samson told her the answer. And uh, she went and told uh, uh, her brethren the answer. And they came to Samson and said, this is the answer to the riddle that you set forth. And Samson said to them, if you have not plowed my heifer, you wouldn't have gotten the answer to my riddle. Now, in other words, now the heifer uh, is the bride or was the bride of Samson. So the answer, it was Samson's wife that brought the answer and then gave to the uh, Philistine and then they showed forth. Now, which means is a type of what uh, Yahweh is doing, what God is doing. Now, God propounded, you know, in a, a riddle and put it forth that the answer will actually be found on the seventh day, just like Samson put forth on the seventh day. And the answer, now anyone that get the answer, there are majorly reward there. 
Now, linen garments, of course, the linen garments speak about priesthood. In other words, the people that come to get the answer, the interpretation, come to the light and understanding of what God is doing. They come to the place of the uh, priesthood of the ages to come. And secondly, there be a change of garment. Change of garment actually talk about immortality. When this present garment will be replaced from the garment, from a beauty from the above. And right now, it is the bride of Christ. It is the bride of Christ at this age that are getting the answer. And God is unveiling the revelation and what he is doing. And as a result, they are coming into the place of the priesthood of the ages to come. And also they are coming to the place of immortality, the place of endless life. So what God, the, the reward to the people that find the mind of God and understand what God is doing and enter it are coming into the priesthood. And I want to say a few things about, you know, um, priesthood this afternoon. You know, the priesthood is the concept of God. Now, priesthood is the answer to the fall of man. Now, because when God created Adam and put Adam in the Eden, God's intention was for Adam to rule and to govern the earth, for Adam to colonize, for Adam to bring forth to birth the glory of God upon the earth, that the earth will have the signature of God. But unfortunately, after a while, Adam failed. And when Adam failed, the answer, you know, to the answer to bring back life upon the earth is tied to priesthood. So God have to introduce priesthood. Now it is by the introduction of the priesthood that Cain and Abel knew about bringing an offering because you can't separate priesthood from an offering. Now you can't separate it. And the Abel offering was accepted because Abel knew that it was blood that God, God is looking for. Now because blood is life. Now for the scripture said in the book of Leviticus that the life of a man is in his blood. So God needed an Abel blood. So he take a priesthood to administer that. So he administered that and that offering was accepted to God. And right now, looking into our, our priesthood, now when God called forth a people, Israel, now when God called forth Israel from uh, the land of Egypt, from Egypt, so when, when they were about to leave, God instructed that they should keep the Passover. And they keep the Passover. Now don't forget that the essence of the priesthood is life. Now the reason for the Passover, now Passover signifies so many things. But that particular Passover, God is bringing these people into life. God wants them to come into the fullness of life. So when God slaughtered out, now Moses saw exactly what happened there. When Moses saw that, Moses came into it. I believe also somehow that Joshua must have seen that. I also believe that Caleb must have also seen that. Now because those who saw that pressed into life, those who saw that, they, they, they could not die in the wilderness period. They couldn't die in the wilderness age. Now because Hebrew captured that and said that by faith, Moses kept the Passover and so that he that touches the firstborn will not touch them. So there is an angel of death that is responsible in slaying men. So the Passover was to preserve them. So that priesthood, that's why when Jesus was a not in the new covenant, he said that this is, this cup is my blood in the new testament, is the new testament in my blood. And the essence of the new testament is to bring eternal life, is to bring eternal life. So Moses saw it and pressed into it. He saw it and pressed into it. So the essence of priesthood is actually, you know, you know, you know, you know, life. The essence of priesthood is life. The essence of the priesthood is to come into the rest of God. The essence of the priesthood is to administer life. That's the essence of the of, of, of priesthood. So the priesthood we are calling to is actually life. Praise God. Now, now as they were joining, they crossed the Red Sea. So when they get to Sinai, now something very significant. And very important happened at Sinai, which some of us don't even know. Now, God's intention, God's intention 
is that man will be an eternal being. God hates death. God does not love death. God hates the oppression of death. That's one of the reasons why Jesus came. You know, when Jesus came, the law of life in Christ Jesus set us free from the law, from the law of sin and death. So God might has been to set his people free from the oppression, from the law of sin and death. Now, because wherever that is sin, definitely there'll be death. Anywhere that is sin, there'll be death at the end. So death is the consequence of sin. Yeah, death. Death is the consequence. Now, by, by sin, we have death. Now, by righteousness, we, we have life. So God, God's intention is to bring life to his people. Is to bring life to his people. Now, because God doesn't associate with death. Of necessity, God has to bring in life. So, at Sinai, God gave Israel the law. His commandment, now, which we can see in the book of now Exodus chapter, I just want us to see something in the book of Exodus chapter 19, when God began to speak, he said, in the, in the third month, when the children of Israel, we are gone forth out of the land of Egypt. The same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Into the wilderness of Sinai. It took them 50 days from after the cross the sea to get to Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and we are come to the uh, desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel uh, camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called him out of the mountain saying, now, Pasha, thou say to the house of Jacob and the children of Israel. Now, this is what I'm going to instruct the house of, you know, Jacob and the children of Israel. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptian, and how I bore you on eagle wings and brought you unto myself. I bore you on eagle wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be a peculiar treasure. You shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people, above for all the earth is mine, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me kingdom of priests, a holy nation, and ye shall be unto me kingdom of priests, a holy nation. So God is looking for a nation. God is looking for a priesthood. These are the word that shall speak unto the children of Israel. Now, these are the words that you shall speak unto them, that by the commandment, by the word I'm giving you, is to raise you to the priesthood, is to raise you a holy nation. So when God gave the law, now the essence of the law is to stop the oppression of death. Now, that's why when you read in Romans chapter 5, I believe, you know, Romans chapter 5, uh, where the scripture said that death was reigning until Moses, praise God. So death was in operation. Oh, uh, um, um, yeah, Romans chapter 5. Death was in operation until Moses, praise God. Hallelujah. He said, Now, wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For until the law, sin was not in the world, but sin is imputed. Now, nevertheless, I want to see verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even after them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam. So, death was reigning until Moses. In other words, God brought life, a technology that could stop the oppression of sin. It doesn't matter whether it's the old covenant or new covenant. Now, the essence of the word of God is to stop the operation of sin. Now, because the Israelites rejected it, they rejected what God offered to them, God gave them the life, you know, to stop the oppression of them. Now, if Israel had heeded the word of the Lord, they would have entered into their rest. They would have entered into rest. But they rejected it, the law had to enter back to the ark again. So, but Moses who pressed into it, that's why if you read Psalm 103, you know, verse 7, he said, he made his ways known. He made his ways known to Moses. So, the ways of God is the way of life. The way of God, the ways of God, they are the ways of life. They are the path of life. That's why in uh, 
you know, you know, you know, in Psalms, he said, he said, thou shalt show me the path of life. And in your presence, there is a fullness of joy. So there is a path that leads to life. There is a way that leads to life. And that way is in his law. So that's why the priest handles the word of God. He handles the word of God to bring forth life. So God gave him the law. He gave him the oracles. He gave him, you know, you know, you know, the instruction that could terminate death. Now, because they rejected it, they are having just the effect of life. Now, for instance, that's what they call, you know, you know, on the day of the atonement, you can find that in the book of Leviticus chapter 16. On the day of atonement, most, you know, the high priest will enter in the tabernacle, having slain the bull for a sin offering, and slain, uh, you know, you know, one goat, and uh, one goat, which is the scapegoat, he will lay hand and confess and confess all the sins of Israel, and the fit man will carry the goat and uh, take it to wilderness where it will not return again. Now, it's actually a type of our Lord Jesus Christ who took our sin, who took away our sin, wherein God will remember it no more. But here in the case of the Israelite, now because God was atoning for them, so the, the high priest, after making the atonement, he will go beyond the veil in the most holy place. Now in the most holy place, he will place the blood. And at the mercy seat, the mercy of God will triumph over judgment. And he will come out again and begin to sprinkle the blood on the people. And say, this is the testament. Now testament is the covenant of life. This is the covenant of life. This is a testimony wherein God joined you and him together. Now anyone the blood touch, you are preserved. Your life is in short for a whole year until another year come. So by this operation, we could see that the journey in the wilderness, the life of God was at work in them. There was operation of the life of God in the wilderness. They left, they left Egypt and were in the wilderness for 40 years. And the scripture said that he brought them forth with silver and gold and none was feeble among them. None was weak. Because of the oppression of life effected by the priesthood. That the priesthood effected life that walk, that 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 makes them not to seek, makes them that their clothes was growing on their body, their shoes were growing on their leg. These are the effect of life. The effect of life. Now, because their soul was shot against that life. He couldn't, you know, you know, preserve them. But here we saw a man, Moses, who pressed into this life. He pressed into this life. He pressed into this life. And that life brought forth the glory of God upon him. Now the essence of the priesthood is to restore life. Is to bring back life. Is to bring back the glory of God. Is to bring back the glory of God. Is to bring back the glory. So the word sent to them. That's why you see Paul said in Hebrew chapter 4 verse 2. The word preached did not profit them. It did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. They did not activate it. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 8 51. He said, if a man keep my word. I love that. If a man keep my word, he will never see them. Praise God. If a man keep my word. If a man keep my word. Praise the Lord. Oh. Uh, I love that. Praise God. And Jesus said here, John chapter 8, verse uh, 51, Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Why did Paul say we shall not all sleep? Now there is a generation that is entering in the reality of the priesthood. They are entering the reality of the priesthood. Now actually, now the priesthood, there was two kinds of priesthood, which I'm just discussing, you know, the function, the ironic priesthood, the uh, Levitical priesthood. Now as long as you are born in the house of a Levi, you are a priest. You are a priest. But if you are from the descent of Aaron, you are a priest that functions in the holy place and the high priest functions in the tabernacle. 
Now, this priest is not actually to continue the, by the reason of death. Hallelujah. I, 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 I remember some years back saying that I, I'm, I'm not actually comfortable uh, with Psalm 82, verse 5, that said that you are, you know, that, that said that ye are God's, but you die like a man. You are God's, but you die like a man. You are God. You die. I am not a God that die like a man. By the reason of the priesthood that I am into, I am called to. Now, this priesthood, they, they, they stop functioning as a result of that. Corruption caught up with them, but there's another kind of priesthood that is called uh, the order of Melchizedek priesthood. This priesthood is the, all, is the priesthood in the order of endless life. Now, that was the priesthood that our Lord Jesus Christ functioned. Is the priesthood that our Lord Jesus Christ functioned. We also see some men in the Old Testament who tapped into the this priesthood order of Melchizedek. But this Melchizedek become real to us when Jesus came and effected it and became the fourth fruit of them that will rise from the dead. So since that time, this priesthood become accessible to anyone that is in Christ. That's why in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, he said, Ye are, you know, a holy priesthood. A holy priesthood. In verse 9, he said that ye are a royal priesthood. Now, I want us to take, take note of these two dimensions of priesthood. A holy priesthood, then a royal priesthood. Holy priesthood in verse 5 of chapter 2 of 1 Peter. In verse 9, of chapter 2 of the same first Peter, he said you are a royal priesthood. Now there are two things there. Number one is our holy priesthood is towards God. It has to do with our access to God, our access to the most holy. Now because we need to enter the most holy. Now when you when you read Leviticus chapter 21, you will begin to see the holy priesthood the effecting of the holy priesthood of the order of Aaron. So it must be a holy priesthood. It must be a priesthood without blemish. It has to be a priesthood that enters the most holy place. Now, there is also a priesthood that is not in that dimension. He ministers to people. He gives the people the bread. He officiates for the people, but he does not enter the most holy place. But here, in the New Testament, we are made holy priesthood and the royal priesthood at the same time so we can enter and bring the life of god and uh, administer it as king now because royal priesthood royalty has to do with kingship so we have to administer that life we have to effect that life that's why priesthood is not con is not completed if it has not administered eternal life Priesthood is not effected, you know, in reality until immortality is in place. That's why, you know, when you read the uh, First Timothy chapter one verse nine and ten, he says he, he has called us with a holy calling. It's with a a holy calling, and he has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life. How will that life and immortality be affected? It will only be affected by the order of the Melchizedek priesthood, by the order of Melchizedek that functions in righteousness. So Melchizedek priesthood is to effect life. So that which was given to Moses, Moses actually functioned in that order. This one thing that people have not even noticed, Moses functioned in that order because in the Levitical priesthood, there are so many restrictions that restrict your liberty of operation. Now, even the high priest who was functioning was still operating in the consciousness of death. And God doesn't like the consciousness of death. He doesn't like that. That's why when he's entering, the day he enters the most holy place, all the priests, you know, he will go for separation for seven days. And after the seven day separation, all the priests will gather. They will run him. They will recite the Torah all night. All night they keep reciting the Torah, reciting the laws of God, reciting, invoking life. Now, because he need life to enter, they will invoke life. They will saturate the environment. They will saturate everywhere with life. Even at that, 
when he was entering, they would still tie robe, which is, you know, dead consciousness. But here was a man, Moses, like a high priest of Aaron. He would be very careful how he administered the offerings, lest he die. He would be careful that all his garments are in place. But here was Moses, who enters the tabernacle without consciousness of death, who goes to the Holy of Holies without consciousness of death. Now, in the priesthood that we are functioning, we must function without the consciousness of death. Sometimes you go to some, some churches, you know, you, you see consciousness of death. You go to some places, consciousness of death. They are even taking levy lev for your debt. You are paying levy for your debt. That's a consciousness of death. You are contributing for your debt. Some people are identified with churches because simply when they die, they will find brethren that will bury them. That's consciousness of death. You are not functioning, even though you are, you are, you are of the lineage of Melchizedek priesthood, but you are not functioning in that priesthood. So the priesthood of Melchizedek is to, you know, you know, you know that must be a re revolutionary in your thinking. Death mustn't be in your thinking. Because that priesthood is to terminate the operations of death. That's what Moses, when Moses saw this, when Moses saw the death, and the content of what was downloaded to him. Now, for instance, now, for instance, let's 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 check this. Let's check this. Let's check this. Now, if you, you are Moses, who did all kinds of signs and wonders in Israel, you know, turn waters to blood, cause the hell everywhere, cause all kind of things, and after that, you parted the Red Sea. And the people cross. Then you fed the people for 40 years, not 40 days, not 10 people, not 20 people, not 1,000 people, not 100,000 people. We are talking about close to 3 million people for there were 6,000 men, not including women, not in, including children and the strangers. Moses, by the operations of God's mercy, fed them for uh, 40 years. Now, having witness God in this degree would that be further you know pressing into God but as something that Moses saw that Moses began to pray Lord if I find favor I want to see your glory I want to see your face because Moses knew that the glory of God that eternal life that immortality the fullness of God is tied to his glory that's why Paul said to make them know the mystery. <laughs> the mystery of this world is glory. The mystery of eternal life is glory. That's why say Christ in you is the hope of glory. So if the fullness of Christ is not harnessed, is not actualized in you, forget about immortality. Forget about fullness of life. Christ in you. And the world grew. How the fullness come. The world have to keep growing in your, in, in, in your heart. Keep growing. As the world is growing, you are coming into life. As the world is growing, you are coming into life. So that life is in glory. That's why the Bible says the glory of God will cover the earth as water covers the sea. It's actually the fullness of life that will cover the earth. So when Moses began to place demand on glory. Actually, the, the glory came to a decree because uh, the scripture said, that the face of Moses, that the glory came on the face of Moses so that Israel could not look at the face of Moses. So Moses handled glory by the priesthood is entered, by what he effected, by what was revealed to him on Sinai, the world, which was to stop the oppression of death. Death was reigning until Moses. Death, I wanted to, I wanted to look into that word. Death was reigning from Adam till Moses. So Moses came and put a comma or a full stop to the operation. In other words, there is a technology that is available that could stop that. But because you could not take advantage of it, you could not take advantage. So because men are ignorant, that's what the Bible says, my people perish because they lack knowledge. Even here, we have a technology in God that could stop that. Here, right now. That's why Paul said that, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all sleep. So the people that won't sleep are the people that has effected the priesthood of Melchizedek to the letter. 
They have infected it. That principle, that life is at work. That life is fully, that Melchizedek life is fully at work in their life. That's why <laughs> the step of entering into that Melchizedek life and functionality is firstly losing the identity of the earth. Yeah, very necessary. Now, at Newbart, we lost the identity of, of, of natural descent. Even some believers that have not rested in their consciousness, as many as receive him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. Children, children not born by the will of man. This one, they are no longer, their descent is not traceable to man in the spirit, in the spirit, but in their consciousness, in their soul. You see, Adamic life that are still traceable to life. That's why, you see, the walk, the walk is a serious walk. Very serious walk. You see, our, our soul is like where Satan dumped refuge all, all years, for thousand years, for decades. Satan dumped refuge upon the soul. So to cleanse that soul takes time. To cleanse all. That's why James wrote in James chapter 1, verse 21. He said, we have fallen aside all the filthiness. All the no, no, no. You, you, you weren't just the person that dumped the refuse by yourself. Even though we are gathering some refuse, we are gathering some dirtiness day by day. We gather them through Facebook, we gather them through uh, WhatsApp, we gather them through technology. That's why, as you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, um, um, the more you stop some of these things, the more your soul will be free. The more your soul will be free. A lot of a lot of dirt are coming to your soul day by day, countering the Melchizedek life, the seed of that Melchizedek life that you receive at a, a new birth. That's why you must guard your soul against the things that stop the operations of life. There are things that reduce the speed of life in your life. So you must to, you must to disengage from them and engage in the activity that, that causes this life to grow day by day until, it, until uh, 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 this corruption is swallowed up by incorruption. Until immortality swallowed up mortality completely. So you as a priest, you that have come to the order of Melchizedek priesthood have to effect the laws of life on daily basis. You have to be effecting the principles of life on daily basis. That's why Jesus said that he that will follow me must carry the cross and follow me. Now the cross is for crucifixion. You keep crucifying the flesh. Anything your eye sees that is not in consonant, you crucify it instantly. You don't allow it to stay. Now, because if it stay, it will it will further breed death in your soul, and death, you know, slow the operations of life. So, as a priest, we have to effect that life that will cause us to activate immortality in fullness. What God, what God wants. Is the operation of the Melchizedek priesthood upon the earth. So the goal of God has been priesthood right from Eden, priesthood right from you know the ironic days, priesthood right from you know uh, the inception of the church, priesthood. So the concept of priesthood is God's idea for dominion over the earth. The concept of priesthood is for the government of the world to come. Now we are pressing in because this kingdom is coming to an age. Now because by the teachings of Jesus, his disciples understood that there is a civilization, that is a life that is coming. So they asked Jesus, when shall this thing be? When will this life come? When will this kingdom end? When shall this thing be? What is a sign of your coming and of the end of the age? I don't want you to understand that this age is coming to an end based on the calendar, based on the agenda of God. We are understanding that the timeliness of Satan 
to run his government upon the earth is almost over. Now, because he had 6,000 years to operate here, to be a God here, and as a God, he enacted this, the, the, the government of sin, the government of death. That's why you see the operation of sin, the operations of death everywhere. But God brought in priesthood to stop the operations of death and sin. So we are seeing that this age is coming to an end. And God is bringing another age. God is bringing another age that, that carries another uh, degree or dimension of life. Another uh, complete civilization entirely. And this age that is coming will be governed by uh, the priesthood, the governmental priesthood, the governmental priesthood, the governmental priesthood of the ages to come. So God is raising the firstborn of the priesthood of the ages to come. I implore you uh, to press into, to be in this company. They are known as the first food company. That's why you the, the, uh, and the church of the firstborn. They are called the first food they are called the church of the firstborn. Uh, they are also called the bride. They are also called the man child. They are also called governmental priesthood. You have to press in and be a part of this priesthood that is emerging in this time. Yahweh bless you in Jesus' name.